the question that's haunted Pokemon for ages. How can they keep their relentless schedule without compromising game quality? Could have the beginnings of an answer in this latest Pokemon news. The reveal of Pokemon Legends ZA could be part of a broader strategy if they make one surprising choice with their next game reveal. So to explain what I mean, we know that there are three major teams working on main series Pokemon. The main Game Freak team is on a cast iron three year schedule with DLC releases the following year also etched in stone. I don't blame them by the way, given the huge multimedia industry that sets its watch by new Pokemon games. Then there's a second, more experimental and boundary pushing Game Freak team piloting new styles, Pokemon Let's Go in 2018, and now two Pokemon Legends games. Finally though, there is Ilka, who were brought on to do remakes starting with Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Now, the Legends team are clearly about pushing the hardware. I'd be astonished if this Legends title is not on the Switch too, but while logic dictates that they would have gone to Gen 5 next, they didn't, they went to Gen 6. Why is that? Maybe just that that was their inspiration, or maybe, maybe it's to do with Ilka. Ilka started its life as a support studio and worked on many games from Yakuza 0, Neo Automata, and so on. Doing Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl was a big step forward for this team, which historically had been focused more on support work. Those remakes had a slightly more muted response than perhaps the original games deserved, but nonetheless, when you consider the development cost against the sales, I'm sure they were hugely profitable and successful by the standards of the team. But what if they could spend even less effort on a title? What if, instead of going to black and white, a title which would need a substantial ground-up remake because originally it was released on the aging DS, they decided to do a remaster of X and Y? I'm not saying 3DS ports are a slouch, a lot of work is clearly required, but with Miitopia and Luigi's Mansion 2 HD, the precedent is there and presumably there is some experience at Nintendo of shepherding these kinds of projects. Granted, Miitopia is by Grezzo and Luigi's Mansion 2 almost certainly is as well, but nevertheless it seems to me that an X and Y remake could require a good deal less work since 3DS and Switch are technologically closer. And that's before you consider that they may have had better quality assets than the 3DS could render to start with. 2024 would usually be the time for an Ilka game if they're keeping to the usual Pokemon Company three-year windows and remakes of X and Y would be a fantastic way to have a big November game in the last full year of the Switch while simultaneously building hype for the new Legends title. In fact, Nintendo could effectively be promoting the new game on the new system while very easily building hype around their Christmas title, a brilliant two-for-one advertising trick. Every single person whose eyes are fixed on ZA is also going to be excited about the release of X and Y. But the major win here would be for Ilka and the way that it would free them up as a studio working on Pokemon. If you look at Miitopia, once you exclude roles like localizers and testers and look at the core development staff, there were about 80% the number of people working on the Switch version compared with the original 3DS version. That's still a lot of people, but definitely not as intensive as a full remake like Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. So what would the rest of those people be doing? Well, what about what the studio has historically been famous for? Supporting. Specifically supporting the development of the new Gen 10 game, which is going to be crucial because it's almost certainly going to be the first generation to launch on Switch 2 and the first one to release after the criticism of Scarlet and Violet. And by the way, Ilka has also continued to expand since 2021. From 288 employees in 2020, it had 376 as of the beginning of April 2023, including a new team working with Bandai Namco. No doubt many of these people are going to be working on the hugely profitable Pokemon franchise, so by the time 2027 rolls around and another Ilka game is due, they should be more than ready to do full justice to black and white remakes. It also helps the Pokemon company if they hold a few options back. When you're porting a game from Game Boy to Switch, sure, you need to remake. There's no option just to touch things up slightly, but it's not clear to me that Gen 8 onwards will need anything quite so drastic and extensive because these games already have an art style which is quite appealing, it just needs translating into better definition. The Pokemon company has to think long term and remakes becoming less drastic mean that they have less room for major eye-catching titles. Keeping black and white back keeps their powder dry for another day. So what's the likelihood of a mainline Pokemon game releasing this year? I realise you'd expect them to announce it with a Legends game if it were happening, but there's no real reason for them to do so, and in many ways, if this is going to be a light news year for Switch, having something up their sleeve for a few months' time would be a very welcome announcement for them. 
However, I simply don't believe that Nintendo would go into their second consecutive year without a mainline Pokemon title at retail, especially when the Switch is going to be struggling. I'd say it's a high likelihood, and 70% or so, that there will be a mainline game this year. And if there is a new game, X and Y just seems like the option that makes most sense to me. It's possible that they could still do black and white. Perhaps they're treating February 2025 to February 2026 as one long 30th anniversary celebration, in which case having games which reference different eras of the 30-year history might be helpful to them. This would point to black and white being a better bet. Or, of course, the game engine for Pokemon Let's Go is presumably sitting in Game Freak's offices gathering dust, so perhaps it could be used to do Pokemon Let's Go 2. I really could see a case for any of these titles being the one that holds the November slot, but given the hype around ZA, it just seems the perfect time to reintroduce people to Gen 6, and so I'm going to say that there's a 50% chance that if there is a mainline title, it will be a remastered Pokemon X and Y. But maybe I'm wrong. Is this a crazy idea or so crazy that it might just work? Please let me know in the comments and subscribe for more Nintendo forecasts.